Yo, what is good, my anime people? What is good, y'all? So, uh, we have some very interesting episodes this week. <clears throat> Not only are they interesting, but at the same time, we are definitely in a position to be seeing some changes to the scenery. Um,. For one thing, we got to see really just how much of a change uh, one of the girls made in this episode towards, you know, gaining now the god bullets to be able to take out these incarnates. Oh, no, no, no. And um, pretty much, you know, having to live with everything that's going on and have a much better understanding of why, uh, you know, Hank was doing what he was doing this week. And that's why it feels like it's going to be now practically her turn to pretty much just live and do the things that, uh, you know, Hank was doing in the first place of taking out these people. So it's kind of sad. Because, you know, she's she's just a little, she's a girl, or not a girl, but she's young, you know, and to just, uh, uh, to just have to deal with that, um, I don't know, I feel, I feel like to make her have to, you know, she pretty much had to fight her own father, not only had to take her out her own father, she then had to, um, what he saw me from over here he then had to you know figure out what uh you know she has to figure out pretty much what does she do now after uh you know taking his life or doing it for whatever you know whatever means and now that it's over do you keep on doing it do you stop you know like what what do you actually do now that you've gone this far and that's the kind of messed up part about what she has to go through is not only did she have to take out her father um she might might have to start taking out more and more people that her father knew with what we see in the previews just a tiny bit is she's somehow going to uh you know run into another incarnate <laughs> excuse me but she's pretty much becoming Hank, right? She's like Hank without the ability to transform. And the problem with it is she's only doing it because now she understands why it was probably, you know, uh, why Hank was doing it in the first place and why would they do something like that and stuff. That's all kind of like catching up with her now so that's kind of her only real reason to be doing it and then on the flip side of that we also have uh everybody who's already dang they're moving everybody who's already um you know transformed fully and can't come back we have them just still spread across the world not to mention hank now is like full-on demon mode angry and we're just kind of stuck not knowing where he is now, you know, or did he transform back into a human form and he's running around or like, you know, he's like trying to live or is he stuck as a wolf practically forever? Excuse me. Um, so that's kind of where I see this story going when I. When I saw it last week and I was like a three-way battle, I saw it as Hank being his own force of nature, his own destructive, like, cause, as if you will. And then we have the people Charlotte's with, the army, pretty much. And then on the flip side, you have uh, the guy who started all this and made him go and uh, make it Hank go enraged. And we can practically say, like, oh, well, now that... We know that about both of them, or that we know that this is possible for both of them. It's only a matter of time before someone runs into Hank, and pretty much they just like, oh my god, 
who ran into a giant wolf and he can't be trusted and it just more and more word spreads about him just like all the other ones uh that you know pretty much got themselves hunted by hank he's going to have to become something that gets haunted uh hunted pretty much because of the scenario and sure the army is going to be going after him like that but i feel like they're more they're more focused on the main threat which is a guy who literally just started his own nation pretty much and (coughs) is about to push and try to fight every single person he absolutely can so i don't know i'm pretty pretty concerned at where this story can go for all these characters like not only do we know just what could be possible for K, uh, Hank and him going off by himself and just destroying everything, we know how we straight up destroyed some of the incarnates and somehow this like zombie flesh rotting dragon has reawoken, which if you saw, if you're one of the people that have been watching my review from start to finish, you already know, <laughs> you already know how I felt about the opener and just like what they were showing us. And they pretty much cleared that up. Like, sure, it, it almost still didn't happen, though. Like, the opener scene, like how it actually looked, didn't actually happen. It was literally just made for the opener. But it actually happened, like the the overall scenario of them doing what they did to the dragon came to light so not all shows just make stuff up in the opener to make stuff seem really cool but they actually went through with it (laughs) and that's what i appreciate actually because not only did they go through with it they gave us you know a weird battle altogether and another battle that charlotte herself needed to actually be a part of uh simply because if she wasn't a part of it she would never know uh she would have never known about her dad like turning rot like rotten like that you know so instead of instead of just being someone who hid away from all the answers and all the truths she was right there to see you know what really was happening and what really was taking place which is really sad uh just for her character to have to experience but at the same time the overall uh you know notion of what it comes with the things that actually put forward more uh you know overall just story building for her overall a lot more to look forward to with her character in general because she was kind of lame she was kind of a lame character but because now she is becoming the one who's hunting down incarnates it's getting a lot more interesting you know now now she's already thinking about hey hank was going to kill everybody he had to that was part of his team because his team was losing it because his teammates were losing humanity they couldn't do the things that they wanted to do that they've been dreaming of doing and the reason why they even started fighting in the first place was looking more and more mucked up but now that she understands that that's what hank was trying to save all this time was just their uh, memories their hopes their dreams and stuff like that she wants to try to do it as well and i thought that was pretty beautiful to really sum that up in this way you know like that's literally her reasoning of fighting not only maybe she can also now find uh she can also find Hank, you know, at some point in time and maybe hope that there's something left of him in there. But I think the story has already kind of conveyed what might happen in that sense. Like we've seen a father who loves his daughter with the most utmost respect. Right. And when he lost himself, he was too far gone. He just threw a tail whip at his daughter and almost take her out so if that's telling us anything it most likely is telling us that that just might be what it's like for hank as well he might be too far gone he's in a full body takeover a lot and just because hank 
wasn't capable of, you know, always transforming. I think he always needed a full moon. You know, he's a werewolf. So I think he has to f abide by those rules. But then when I say that, I start to think about Mr. Vampire and how he was, you know, on the battlefield with everybody in the daylight, you know. So sure, he wasn't fighting like he was in the background with Hank uh, making the plans and stuff or whatever from what we saw. But he was still, I feel like, in the day at times. So maybe just like him or just like Hank at the nighttime, he has to wait until nighttime for his powers to actually be relatively, you know, higher or like stronger or something. I don't know. I really I still want to learn more about what type of vampire he is cuz what, what I called him was Daywalker. He's pretty much the blade of this of this world. <laughs> he already can walk in the day, bite people, turn them into his, you know, he has all the powers of the vampire, but he just somehow happens to not have any effects on him, you know. So I I don't know. I I enjoyed it. I really do like that. Um but to be fair, there was something that was kind of weird about it, just in the grand scheme of why did uh, why did all of this transpire uh, with this with this body? You know, like from what we could see, it didn't look like anyone had bit him and turned him into this like monster and stuff like that. It just seems like for some odd reason, his body regenerated you know and that's that's pretty much the end and small of it right like oh he just happened to be able to come back that's that's it and that's kind of all we got <laughs> you know uh but hopefully there's more information out there or that the fact you know we've seen so much of just weird stuff happening with these incarnates in general that maybe this is just another thing that could have been possible down the line is rejuvenation of like just over time they can reawaken or something i don't know man like it felt it felt really weird it felt like this was just really needed for the main character like i was saying the girl to see her father this way to still almost hope that there was a little bit of something in there left but to find out there really wasn't you know so it felt like that was the main goal of this week's episode which is really sad but at the same time, it's good for us as the viewers because now we can understand just that much more of why, uh, you know, she's going on doing something so dangerous that she really has no business doing when she's as, you know, in the state that she's in or whatever. So I really do enjoy this show. I wasn't expecting them to really drop the whole entire series on this girl's hands and, uh, and Boob McGee, uh, Liza's hand, so, it's really, it's really interesting that they did it, I want to see if this show still has, like, the same type of impact to me, like, if it still feels like a good show with, you know, one of the doper characters being taken out, we just took out a full-blown werewolf guy that, that we were following, but to be fair, we were always really looking at him through Charlotte, uh, Charlotte's uh, through Charlotte's eyes, right, we were always looking through her perspective of what Hank was doing at times, mainly, to when, like, she joins up, and how it was, uh, you know, affecting him, sure, we would see him to go in and have a dope fight, but at the end of the day, we were usually at an angle to see what she's seeing, and it's him being completely sad about having to do what he has to do with these bullets, so, I don't know, I definitely can see this show being something people really enjoy or really just, uh, you know, liking it at first and then maybe dropping it because certain things happen that they don't like. I, I don't know. I just really do hope you guys appreciate uh, what we get with these shows because usually when they do stuff like this, it has a much, much higher meaning in the grand scheme of them dropping something uh secretly i mean not secretly but something that has more meaning more passion more drive behind it because it's actually building up instead of just dropping it in our lap and saying hey how does this make you feel you literally gotta look at it's like a rubik's cube you gotta solve it first and then you're like oh well i guess that was cool <laughs> like why were I, i'm sorry 
all right my anime people i got another video for you guys coming up here soon so if you guys did enjoy i hope you guys are subscribed or already one of the og triple ogs and keep showing up for your anime g and i will definitely be dropping that daily content as soon as possible and i will talk to you in the next one so with that being said peace